Hello guys and welcome back to another video. So yes, it has been quite some time since my last video, around two months, sorry about that, got busy. However, I have been working on new projects and it's slow going, but it is going. So before this video starts, I would love to give a huge thank you to my Temple Star patrons as they helped me get a large Argon tank and that is fantastic. Thank you so much. Hell yeah. I want to give another huge thank you to Backyard Science 2000 who actually donated, yes, donated this uh, five cubic foot oxygen cylinder to me. So thank you so much for that. This will be used. On that note, Backyard Science 2000 has actually donated a lot of chemicals to me and they've all been really good quality. So if you want to uh, get in on some of that action, I put his store linked in the uh, description below because he sells some very good quality chemicals and I feel like if you guys need them, you would highly enjoy it. Okay, so I think I've brought up everything that I've uh, wanted to, so let's get right into the video. So in my last video, which was uh, quite a while ago, I uh, made triamino guanidine nitrate. Since then, I have recrystallized this triamino guanidine nitrate to get it ultra pure. This was pretty simple, and I just dissolved it in a minimum amount of water and got nice needle-like crystals, which I actually uh, was able to get a picture of under a microscope. So the next step in this whole process is for me to turn this triamino guanidine nitrate into the chloride. Now, to do this, I must first freebase it, and for that, I will be using dimethylformamide, water, sodium hydroxide, and a very cold ice bath using dry ice. I actually managed to do this reaction first try as it really is not that difficult and uh, I actually got exactly the yield that the paper got in the patent that I followed. So here you can see that I'm doing exactly half of this scale of what the patent did and here I have my sodium hydroxide water solution with uh, the triamino guanidine nitrate dissolved in it and to this I will now add the dimethylformamide and once that is added it heats up greatly while I have to vigorously shake it for around a minute. Once I vigorously shook it for around a minute, I stuck it in the dry ice bath and just kind of left it there for actually a few hours. Once it was like a really thick syrupy slurry, I uh, took it out and let it warm up overnight back to the uh, fridge temperature. From here, it uh, I actually had solid that precipitated and all I had to do was filter and dry it and I got exactly one gram, which was what I expected. So once I dry the free base under vacuum, because it actually is sensitive to air, so I don't want it drying under air, I can now react it with hydrochloric acid to make the triamino guanidinium chloride. This is very simple, because all I have to do is react one mole of triamino guanidine with one mole of hydrochloric acid. So there's no solubility rules for the triamino guanidine that I could find anywhere online, so I just kind of uh, ballparked it. So. I just said, okay, so I'm gonna try five milliliters of water initially to dissolve this one gram. And it turns out it actually dissolved the entirety of the one gram nearly perfectly. So uh, that was lucky. So once it was all dissolved and stirred up, I started adding the hydrochloric acid. Once all the hydrochloric acid was added, uh, the triamino guanidinium chloride actually crashed out of the solution which was uh, not expected as I thought it would be a lot more soluble. Anyways, it makes life a lot easier, so I'm not gonna complain. So now I just cool it in the refrigerator to precipitate as much as I possibly can, and I filter it and dry it. Here is the final dry yield and product that I got from the triamino guanidinium chloride reaction. Now, here's a picture that I got of the triamino guanidinium chloride crystals, and I do wanna discuss this a little bit before moving on. If you look closely at this picture, you can actually see that there are three different distinct types of crystals. This is what I uh, suppose to be triaminoguanidine chloride, diaminoguanidine chloride, and aminoguanidine chloride. Now, as you can see, the main majority of these crystals are the triaminoguanidine chloride crystals, which are these rectangular shaped uh, crystals that are very small and compact. Then there are these more icicle shaped crystals, uh, which I think is the diamino guanidine, as I think that that would be in greater concentration than the amino guanidine, which are these hexagon shaped crystals. The reason why I think that the diamino guanidine is in more presence than the amino guanidine is because of the solubilities of both of them and how I purified it before the recrystallization. 
because this triaminoguanidine chloride is actually made from the triaminoguanidine nitrate before I recrystallized it. So this actually was the more impure stuff. The next plan of action was going to be turning this chloride of triaminoguanidine into C2N14. Klopoki had a uh, paper outlining this and uh, I just followed that synthesis. Now I did fail this synthesis, but its I don't think it was because of the uh, slight impurities of the diaminoguanidine and aminoguanidine chloride crystals, but I think it was more because I actually let the uh, temperature get too high at one point and uh, it kind of just destroyed the reaction from there. Anyways, I will still show you what I did so you can at least see my uh, process. So here is the proposed reaction mechanism found in Klopoki's paper where it shows the uh, diazination and then dimerization of the molecule. The paper says that in order to properly dimerize it and to cyclize it, to turn it into the known C2N14, is to bring the pH to around 8 after the acidic uh, diazination. Now there are two places I think I messed up, or at least could have messed up in this reaction. Uh, the first one being the sodium nitrite step where I did let it go to around 3 to 4 celsius because I was kind of in a hurry and uh, started hearing micro detonations which was not good. So yeah that could have been a possibility. And the second one was uh, after the diazination I may have uh, brought the pH a little over 8 because I don't have very accurate pH strips. So. Either one of those could have been my downfall, but whatever it was, uh, I just never extracted anything in the end. Okay, so if you can see, uh, right there is a little piece. Let's see if it does anything. Wow. Yeah, so that didn't work. Thank you everybody so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I will be using this triaminoguanidine, uh, nitrate and chloride in future videos, so I guess this was not a complete fail. Well, see you guys.